Welcome to Beaver Park Golf Club. Uh, I'm Aaron Small, the course manager. Today we're going to take you through our spring aeration program. And what we're doing today is we're scarifying the greens. Really, we're just looking to take any um, debris out of them. We're looking to keep our organic matter readings where we want them and just really clean them out a wee bit. Because we're doing verde draining and solid tining as well, it's a good opportunity to do it first and then really, you know, the golfers don't need it done. Also, we're locked down at the minute, we have the opportunity to do it. So the recovery, we don't really care too much how long the recovery takes because there's no golfers here. So we're going in with a light scar fan today, probably just a mill or two below the surface and just clean them out and any debris, we'll get rid of that. So I've lifted a wee handful of the organic matter we've taken out. Bit of fibre, all the material that we don't want in the ground. So the reason why we're scarifying as well is open up the ground a wee bit. That lets the sand in and then that'll give us the trueness on the greens. The scarifying as well will make the grass more uniform so there's no lateral growth in it. Uh, that'll make the ball run better and a wee bit of speed in them. So after we scarify the green, we have to blow the green because of the amount of debris, the mowers won't cut it right. So we have the greens mower there in the background cutting the green. It has the brush down. That'll stand the grass up even more. Again, for lateral growth, a good clean cut. And he's really just cleaning the green out now and getting it back down to the levels that we're looking to achieve. At the minute, we're at four and a half mil. Um, they'll all be coming down once the temperature allows us. So we've done our scarifying, we've done our cutting, now we're verde draining the greens. We're verde draining with an 8 mil solid tine. We're going down about 5 or 6 inches, nothing major. And we're letting air into the ground. Uh, we're also relieving compaction. Uh, the reason why we're doing a small tine is because, really in my opinion, with the golf course being closed for 2 or 3 months, uh, I don't want the golfers coming back and the greens aren't in good shape. So we're sort of offsetting a wee bit of the work we're doing by keeping the golfers happy. They've went a couple of months without any golf, so you know we want the greens to be in tip-top condition for when they come back. And uh, our, our levels are where we want with the greens anyway, so we don't have to go in with big holes. So the smaller the hole, the quicker the recovery. That's what we're looking for at the minute. So today we're using the Toro Procore 648. This is a fantastic machine that can holotine or solotine, so a lot of aeration, that's what you'll be doing with it. Uh, anything from 8mm tine to 19mm tine, holotine or solotine. Uh, you also have the ability to set it at a speed. So the speed's located here, so the slower you go, uh, the more holes you get in the ground, so that's determining, you know, what what's happening at the time. So, also you've got uh, depth setting. So if you want to go an inch into the green, or say four to five or six inches, you can do that. So a great machine uh, gives the greenkeeper the option of what he wants to do at the time, and they'll change from year to year. You'll never have a program of what you want to do and stick to it. Uh, it'll be determined by weather and golfers and just where you want your greens to be at. So that is something that the, that'll be up to the greenkeeper's discretion of what he wants to do at the time.
So we're at the 10th bunker now, and this is the last stage before the sand goes in. This is the rubber crumb liner going in with uh, CRL putting it in. Really just crushed tires and um, a resin bond going into it. So they're putting that down now, and then we'll be able to come in behind them with the sand. What the rubber bond or the rubber crumb does is stops the material underneath getting into your sand, so that contaminates it. It's not as white, and then it also it stops the sand going down and blocking your drains. So it has a number of benefits. It's quite costly, but we're going to be the first club in Northern Ireland to have all 18 holes uh, with a liner in it. Okay, so we've came to one of the last processes of our program, and that's sanding. Sanding is a key ingredient to any golf course, but the golfers don't like it, and your mechanic doesn't like it because it blunts the machines. We'll put on about a ton to a ton and a half a green, which isn't a lot, really, but because we haven't done big holes in the greens, that's all we can get in. That's all we want to get in at the minute. So you're looking at, say, 30 ton over the golf course, We'll pay about £32 a tonne. The reason why we'll get it so cheap is because we'll go through maybe 150, 200 tonne a year. Uh, so we'll bulk buy that. The, the sand then goes down into the holes we've created and that'll act like drainage channels. So we've maybe 150, 200,000 holes on one of the greens. Uh, that'll go into your holes and that also creates your levels. It'll work the thatch as well. It'll move about and uh, any thatch you have it'll break it down. So sand is a real key element to greenkeepers to producing good surfaces. So we've came to the final piece of the jigsaw on the maintenance and we have matted all the sand in. So we'll take a wee look at what that looks like. So we have the, the sand all matted in lovely. All these particles will go down the holes. They'll act like wee drainage channels and really keep the water movement off the top. So everything's looking really good and we can just help the recovery process now with a granular feed in a couple of weeks whenever the temperatures lift and that'll get the grains back into shape for hopefully the golfers coming back at the end of the month. <laughs>